production of The J.R. Eldridge Show is made possible with financial support from Turner & Turner, Attorneys at Law, Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments, the accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning & Plyler, PLLC, Welch Funeral Home, Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance, Southern Bancor, Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King and Associates, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Price and Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker, Eccles, Thompson and Kneebone and Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County. This is the J.R. Eldridge Show with the head coach of the Arkadelphia Badgers. Joining Coach Eldridge today is your host, Caleb Byrne. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the J.R. Eldridge Show. I'm Chris Babb, sitting in this week for Caleb Byrne. Coach Eldridge, thanks for joining us. Uh, We've talked a lot about Arkadelphia football, uh, the two of us over the last nine or 10 years, first time in this setting. Uh, glad to be here today with you to be able to talk about the Badgers and look forward to Caleb uh, being back next week. But let's start off talking about Arkadelphia's 40 to eight win over Fountain Lake on Friday night, moved to two and one in conference play. Coach, it was a game that, uh, uh, just taking a look at Fountain Lake and the troubles that Fountain Lake has had, that uh, had a chance, uh, there was a chance, you knew there was a chance that the first team, if you come out and do what you're supposed to do, there was a chance that uh, you could score a lot. But in order to do that, the first team has to come out and do what they're coached to do as hard as they're coached to do it. How pleased were you with, the, with your group's uh, ability to do that Friday night? Yeah, I was really pleased. Uh, you know, felt like really from the, the first kickoff, we knew that they would probably uh, onside kick. Uh, Ricky Rogers Jr. does a great job of fielding that onside kick. We get the ball. Uh, just a, a really, you know, we talked about it all week, the fact that uh, it's really not about who you play, it's about how you play. Um, and, you know, really that goes, wh whether it's a quote unquote great team or a quote unquote not so great team, um, you know, we're trying to make sure that we clean up mistakes pr from the previous game, things that we worked on throughout that week in practice, and really focus on executing our job um, as hard and as fast as we possibly can. Uh, and I was really pleased with our, our, uh, our football team. From the time we started to the time we ended, everybody was engaged. Everybody was, was uh, uh, really focused on being able to do just what I said. And, um, you know, um, it's really awesome when you're able to do that, especially when it's homecoming. And, um, and so uh, just really pleased with our football team. You mentioned it was homecoming. We'll get back to the game in just a second. But uh, Friday night, the uh, 1979 uh, Badger State Championship team was recognized. I believe uh, I saw about 25 to 30 of those guys, several guys who have had uh, sons play for you. Uh, I know we've talked a little bit about Kerry Garnett being able to be back here, but just a good tradition there and a good night for those guys to be able to come back. Yeah, it was fun to see all those guys shake their hands. I uh, was able to talk to, uh, to Kerry at, uh, at the pep rally. So thankful that we've got guys uh, like Kerry that, that still are interested in Badger football. You know, hopefully someday the guys that are on our current teams right now will be able to come back and, and have those same types of memories of, of their experience as an Arkadelphia Badger, be able to, to celebrate that with, uh, with the guys that they played with. Uh, you know, and that's really what, what it's all about as far as uh, we, want, we want our players to have the best high school football experience that we can possibly provide them as a coaching staff. I think Coach Outlaw must have done that for those guys. Um, obviously, you know, um, the success that they had, but then also all of them showing up uh, and, and having a good time being celebrated during that game. I know it meant a lot to them, but it also means a lot to current Badgers. Let's go back to the game. It was a game in which Arkadelphia got off to a quick start. Buster Thomas got his first start at quarterback. His first play is a 55-yard touchdown pass to Jay Sean Davis. 
Kyron Harrison, the starting running back, three carries, 99 yards, three touchdowns. I believe you said he, almost, he only played eight plays in the game. So there were some offensive productions. No game is ever perfect, though, and I guess you're able to take from film on Sunday with your guys some of the, even from a game like that, able, things that you're able to correct and clean up. Yeah, so on, on Sunday, we're able to, to go through the good, what we're calling the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so whether it's a, a big win, uh, a tough loss, uh, we're going to look at the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, from now on. And, and we were able to do that. There was a lot of good. Uh, there was still some bad, and there was some ugly. Um, you know, but, but as far as our, our offensive production uh, from the start, really, really good. Um, and just really did what we said we were going to do, uh, executed the game plan, um, and, and it paid off, you know, and then defensively being able to get off the field quickly um, on third down and not having any really kind of creating a, an advantage on special teams uh, that allowed us to put points on the board early. Um, you know, so when you look at it, though, we could have been at 35 earlier had we made our PAT. We've got to be more consistent on our PATs, um, you know, because then we don't make the – we don't – uh, convert on the two-point conversion uh, so could have been done a little bit faster those are some of the things that we talked about and then we got a lot of guys experience on the football field uh, we were able to to see on the field on the film what what happened on the field with those guys who hadn't played as much this year uh, and be able to correct mistakes uh, and that experience right there that that uh, that half worth of football um, is is going to be huge for those guys. The importance of a correcting a th something like point after touchdown, any of those special teams areas, they didn't come into play this week. They didn't determine the game, but we have seen the last two weeks that uh, one little play can make a difference, and it probably will later in the season. That's exactly right, and that's why we're doing the good, the bad, the ugly after every game uh, so that we make sure that we're not overlooking something like that just because we win a football game. Uh, so you know, you're able to, to point out those things. You're able to say, okay, this is something that we've got to work on this next week in practice so that when it does matter, because it will matter, just like you're saying, uh, you know, we, we can be better. There was a lot of good Friday night on the uh, homecoming Friday night at Arkadelphia High School. The Badgers took a 40-8 to victory over Fountain Lake. Let's go ahead and take a look at the highlights. There you see the homecoming royalty, uh, maid of honor Olivia Dixon, and the 2019 homecoming queen, Teddy Buckley. Congratulations to those two young ladies. Coach, right off the bat, special teams played a, a key part. J uh, Ricky Davis, excuse me, Ricky Rogers gets the recovery, and then Buster finds Jay Sean Davis and a nice run after the catch from Jay Sean. Yeah, it's really, you can see the explosiveness of Jay Sean right there. Great throw by Buster, uh, knowing where to put the ball. Uh, Jay Sean does a great job of uh, catching it and making yards after catch. The extra point was good. You saw Savage there slip on the uh, extra point, but 7 nothing. Arkadelphia defense gets its first uh, time to come out against Fountain Lake. Coach, talk a little bit about the preparation for the Fountain Lake offense that you knew your Badgers were going to see this week. Well, we've got to be, we, we talked all week about being extremely disciplined in our fits, you know, uh, in those tight formations such as the wing tee. Uh, you've got to do a great job of fitting on the buck sweep. We've got to be able to squeeze and wrong arm uh, to be able to, to get in the new gaps that they're creating with their, their offensive scheme. Thought we did a pretty good job of that. Force a punt, Kyron Harrison's first touch of the game goes for a touchdown. This was the first start for Buster Thomas. Four or five passing, Kyron Harrison, only three rushes, 99 yards, three touchdowns. Talk about the, the confidence that you think Buster might have been able to get from having a first start in a game like this. Well, I think it's really good for him, um, r regardless of the opponent. Again, uh, you know, just being able to be back there, being able to see the whole field, uh, knowing exactly where he's got he's to look on every play. Um, he did a great job, and, uh, and that experience is going to pay off. Fountain Lake on its second off offensive possession here. Badger defense only gave up a couple of first downs in the uh, first half uh, on the way to, uh, to a big, uh, big lead. Talk about your defense uh, so far as we see another punt forced. Yeah, right there. So our, our defensive line really, really was dominant, uh, doing a great job of squeezing and spilling. Uh, if we have pullers, 
doing a great job of block reaction and just really disrupting what they're trying to do up front, which helps the linebackers to be able to get to the ball and stay clean uh, and make tackles. Set you up with a short field and Terrell Sumler gets his uh, first uh, touchdown as a Badger. Terrell played defensive line. He moved over to offensive line some uh, this week with an injury to Matthew Parnham. Terrell is one of those kids who sure was glad to be able to see him get a touchdown. Yeah, Terrell's great, great football player for us on offense, defense. Uh, you saw right there, he's also got, uh, got a knack for carrying the ball, keeping his pad level down. Uh, he was our Badger Spirit Award winner this week. Uh, just uh, did an excellent job on both sides of the ball. Fountain Lake, one of their uh, longest runs of the first half here on this possession. Arkadelphia leads uh, early in the first quarter, I guess midway through the first quarter. Defense comes up with another stop. And on this play, I believe we will see another uh, uh, stop by Trey Bledsoe knocking a pass away. It's a great job by Trey. He did an excellent job on an island over there by himself. Uh, made a great play on the ball, kept the uh, receiver from, uh, from being able to convert uh, to make it a first down. Kyler Pfeiffer with a catch and a good run after the catch. Good find from Buster. And here's Kyron Harrison's uh, uh, another touchdown from Kyron Harrison. Pretty efficient. Kyron wasn't the uh, Offensive Player of the Week uh, this week uh, by the coaching staff, although most weeks he and, uh, has a pretty good shot at it. But uh, uh, talk about some of your Players of the Week from this week. Yeah, so uh, Staten Witten was our player, player of the week on offense. Uh, had an unbelievable catch. Um, and, and then on top of that catch, he also had two pancake blocks and three domination blocks. Uh, continues to get after it um, every week for us. So really excited about what he did offensively. Our defensive player of the week, uh, there were several guys that did an outstanding job. But Lucas Witherspoon, uh, you'll see him with an interception here in a little bit. Terrell Sumler could have also been the de defensive player of the week, uh, but since he did so well on both sides of the ball, you can see Terrell right there uh, disrupting thing from, things from his, uh, from his defensive tackle spot. Uh, had a great game, but uh, just really another play right there, tackle for a loss. Uh, I think that was... Uh, Sumler and Witherspoon there. Yeah, right there, so they just played an excellent game. The Badgers lead as we are in second quarter action now. Coach Fountain Lake had gone back to a traditional offense that we've seen Fountain Lake run in years past before the, the previous coach, uh, J.D. Plumley, uh, had been there. Uh, and here we see a nice uh, catch from State and Whitten in traffic. It was unbelievable one-handed grab and then just the ability to, to get that ball tight to his rib cage and not lose it right there. Huge play uh, right there by State. Kyron Harrison with his third and final carry of the night goes into the end zone for the third touchdown. Kyron Harrison, six touchdowns against uh, Sylvan Hills to open the season. Uh, a couple of touchdowns against Benton has really done what I guess you expected him to do uh, from that running back position this is his senior season. Yeah, he's, a, he's an outstanding football player, offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, and right there, you know, we had talked previous to the game about uh, you know, we'd love for him to be able to, to get three touchdowns, uh, you know, really quick, and be able to, be able to uh, let Braylon come in and, and make plays, and we'll see him here in a minute. Uh, but uh, he just did an excellent job and, and just uh, plays hard all the time. There was a little interception from Lucas Witherspoon, his uh, first interception uh, of the season. And here you see uh, the Kyler Pfeiffer running on the uh, uh, jet sweep around the uh, left side. Pfeiffer running that position that Buster uh, Thomas had run due to uh, Thomas now being at quarterback. And here's our first look at Braylon Bailey. Ex excuse me, that's not Braylon, it's uh, Kyler again. Yeah, I thought Kyler played an excellent game. He, he uh, there was only one, one ball that we thought that he, he could have caught that he didn't. Uh, ran the ball well, caught the ball well. Uh, did a great job uh, during the game. Here's Braylon Bailey on the previous carry and now a uh, fortunate bounce for the Badgers there as it went into the hands of Braylon for his first touchdown. Yeah, this highlight was, was on the good and it was on the bad and the ugly. <laughs> so um, definitely a uh, great job by Braylon being able to pull the ball back in right there, but we've got we to secure that ball better. Uh, with his second effort, he's able to get into the end zone. Just got to be able to secure that ball. Arkadelphia does get a 
a big lead in the second quarter. And coach, we had talked earlier in the week that the possibility that Fountain Lake uh, uh, is struggling with numbers. Uh, they, in a game against Nashville the previous week, had asked for the uh, sportsmanship rule to be put in effect early. Uh, and they did that again uh, here uh, against Arkadelphia. Uh, hats off to those young men that are on Fountain Lake's team for sticking out when they had some adversity in the summer. Yeah, you, you know, uh, you hate to see that happen with the program. Uh, you know, that is, has been, you know, we've had some battles with Fountain Lake when Coach Gillerman was over there. Um, you know, they always play hard, and that's one of the things that we talked to our team about prior to the game. Uh, you know, regardless of their numbers, regardless of, of uh, what you see on film, that these guys are going to play hard. Um, and uh, we just wanted to make sure that we were dominant from the time, uh, from the time we kick it off. You're able to see, get some of your younger guys in the game. Obviously, we see one run uh, here from Fountain Lake that gets them into Badger territory. Uh, the defensive second well, units particularly got a lot of work in the second half. What were your overall uh, uh, thoughts and, uh, of the coaching staff after the second half, especially with your twos? Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing was we, we, um, you know, we give up some chunk plays, um, and we did in the second drive as well. Uh, our goal was – you know, to keep them from scoring as a second defense. Uh, we weren't able to do that. Again, you've got to make, like, against an offense like this, and we'll face another offense like this uh, next week uh, against Haskell Harmony Grove. You've got to, to be precise in where you fit. We tried to get the, the second group more reps uh, in, in practice last week to prepare them for that. We just had some misfits that, uh, uh, to where we weren't able to, you know, to take away those chunk plays. Another onside kick recovery for Arkadelphia. The second unit uh, gets the ball on offense now. Alex Lloyd running quarterback. You see Braylon Bailey, uh, the running back. The second unit was able to get some, uh, make some yards, just not able to get into the end zone during their time on the field. Yeah, we got really close. Uh, once we get uh, closer to the end zone, uh, like we make a key mistake right here. Um, the wide receiver on the left does not run the correct route. Alex Lloyd makes the right read, uh, but uh, to not hand the football off, uh, but then he's unable to make the pass. Uh, right here, Braylon probably gets in the box if he runs the correct track. He cuts it back. Uh, if he runs the correct track, we're probably in the end zone, and, uh, and we never, never have to run this play, really. Uh, so we run a bubble, uh, the bubble's kind of overthrown a little bit, and then we've got to catch it and get really run toward the sideline, toward our block, instead of trying to go back toward where the defenders are running from. Uh, but those are things that are correctable on film. But good experience, nevertheless, for your uh, uh, sophomores and a lot of sophomores and a couple of juniors to be able to, uh, to get in there. And that will be valuable as you go on later through the season if you're going to need to call on one of those and in the next year. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Like right here, you know, we're able to uh, force a turnover on this drive, keep them out of the end zone. Uh, it's a good job. I thought Alex Turley uh, did a really good job. Uh, just playing extremely hard and our, our linebackers did good. Um, Darian Beard fighting at that spot there. You can see Malcolm Turner with a great tackle right there. Uh, jars the ball loose and we're able to get the ball back. Turnover there as Arkadelphia de defense comes up with the ball and as we wrap up the highlights, your final score was 40-8. to eight. Uh, Coach, you, you got the conference victory. You got the uh, maximum amount of tiebreaker points. And as we look at the standings a little bit later, we'll kind of go over that. But you also got out of there with no injuries. Uh, this game was played. Obviously, we've talked a lot about Buster uh, Thomas playing quarterback. We talked about Terrell Sumler being moved over to the offensive line because of injuries to Cannon Turner and Matthew Parnham. But also good, good news late last week on both of those injuries. Although the timeline isn't for sure yet, it is, does look like both of those players will be back before the end of the season. They're not season-ending injuries. Yeah, that's a, that's a real positive for, for both of those young men, and then it's a real positive right. for the Badgers as well. Uh, so we'll look forward to, to getting them back. And, you know, and at the same time, uh, those, things, those things really happen. Uh, it's, it's a part of the game of football, and that's, that's what's tough mm -hmm. about football, and that's what – you know, uh, you do all these preseason predictions. You've got all these people talking about, 
uh, about who's going to be good, who's not, this and that. Uh, and those are some of the unseen factors that nobody ever uh, really likes to talk about uh, until they happen, uh, you know. So we're going to take it one step at a time. We're trying to make sure that we've got all of our players prepared and ready to play um, and moving people around and making sure that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, we as coaches um, are able to be proactive in those situations uh, so that in practice guys are getting the reps that they need to get um, if something like that does happen. We've talked about the Badgers' 40-8 to win over the Fountain Lake Cobras. Let's take a look at the uh, rest of the results from last week. There you have the Badger score on top. Malvern uh, gets a 45-14 to win over the Ashdown Panthers. Boxite defeats Harmony Grove 28-7. to The Harmony Grove Cardinals are the Badgers' opponent this week, and we'll talk about them here in a couple of minutes. And then Robinson defeated Nashville 34-7 to in Little Rock. Robinson had two straight uh, home games against Arkadelphia and Nashville responded from the Arkadelphia loss with a 27-point victory over the Nashville Scrappers. Let's take a look at the conference standings. We're only three weeks into the 4A7 uh, schedule, and you see the conference standings there in the middle of the column. Boxite at 3-0, and and then a four-way logjam of 2-1 and between Robinson, Malvern, Nashville, and Arkadelphia. Harmony Grove at 1-2, and two, and then Ashdown and Fountain Lake both 0-3, but you take a look at that, obviously a lot of those uh, ties will be broken, but the right-hand column there is the tiebreaker points, and should it come down to uh, ties and you have head-to-head, -head, and when, when it comes to three-way and four-way, coach, that's a lot of stuff that uh, uh, coaches have to look at at some point. You don't want to get caught looking at it too early, but it does come down to the fact that for each conference win, you're able to get 13 tiebreaker points in case there is a, a three-way tie. That's more for people like us to sit and, and figure out scenarios and things like that. But coaches are taking things like that into account during a game when, when you're coming, coming down towards the end of a game. Yeah, you really are, you know, uh, and really the way we look at, it, look at it as a coaching staff is, you know, We've just got to take care of business. We've got to take care of business this week versus Haskell Harmony Grove. Uh, you know, you can we 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 look at those things, uh, but they, you know, some of those things we can't control. Uh, and what we want to do is make sure that we are controlling what we can control, uh, and that's how practice is going to go uh, on Monday today. That's how practice is going to go on Tuesday. Uh, and what can we do best to make sure that we take care of our business uh, so that in the end, um, you know, we can look at, look at the standings and go, okay, this is where we are. Uh, now it's playoff time, and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be in a, in a position uh, regardless to uh, whether it's here or on the road, whatever. Uh, just be in a position to take care of business again because that's, that's really what it is if you – if you break down a season, you know, you've got, uh, you've got your, your non-conference, you've got your conference, and you've got your playoff season. Uh, and it just begins totally over again once you hit that playoff season. And obviously those standings will, will flesh out a little bit as, as the teams play head-to-head -head over the next four weeks as we wrap up the regular season and head into the third season. Coach, you talk a lot about uh, practice. You said last week on this show that one of the differences you thought in your team's performance was its practice the week of the Robinson game compared to uh, practice the week of the Nashville game. I uh, heard Coach Escola from Robinson ask, uh, answer almost the same thing. What was the difference this week when you beat Nashville by 27 points and you lose to Arkadelphia by one? He said, I think it was a wake-up call and our kids came to practice and work. I don't think people realize the importance of the practice week and the preparation. I've heard you say several times in your staff that you win the game on Friday, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and, and even Monday in your practices. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And I think, uh, you know, there are so many different teams that run so many different schemes, uh, you know, and it really comes down to who's going to execute the best and play the hardest. Uh, you know, so what it really comes down to, especially in practice, is a mindset. You know, is our mindset uh, to the point to where we, we will go out to practice, we'll have energy, effort, and focus in practice uh, so that we can have a great practice executing our stuff at full speed so that on Friday 
we will execute our stuff at full speed, regardless of the scheme. Uh, you know, and that's where uh, the management of uh, of that mindset falls upon the coaching staff, and and so uh, that's our biggest. Uh, I guess our biggest goal is to manage that mindset as we move forward and continue to, to try to have good practices. This week it's the Harmony Grove Cardinals as we go ahead and take a look at the rest of the schedule in the 4A7. Arkadelphia will travel to Benton to take on the Haskell Harmony Grove Cardinals. Ashdown and Nashville will face off in Howard County. The Bauxite Miners head to Fountain Lake and then the Robinson Senators will head down I-30 to Malvern. Coach, let's take a look at this game for the Badgers against Harmony Grove. Uh, the Har Badgers and Harmony Grove have only been in the conference uh, together for one year. This is the second year of the first cycle. First trip to Harmony Grove. Not a long trip, just Benton, just up the way. Uh, just this side of Benton, actually. Um, when you prepare for Harmony Grove, what are some of the things that uh, Badger fans could be should be looking for? I know head coach Mike Guthrie is going to have those guys playing unbelievably hard uh, this early in the conference race. They won a 34 to nothing game, I believe was the score, in a home win against Nashville last uh, year. Uh, what are some of the things that you see from the Harmony Grove Cardinals on film? Well, you, I think you said it, they, they play extremely hard, um, you know, and, and really uh, they're going to play hard offensively. They're putting you in a bind because of their scheme, so they'll be in the diamond T. Uh, so we've got to be extremely disciplined defensively. Uh, and then offensively, we've got to make the most of every possession because they're also going to try to eat the clock with their offensive scheme. Uh, so we've got to make the most of that. Then we've also, on special teams, we've got to be able to uh, recover onside kicks if they're trying to steal a possession. Uh, you know, so offensively, defensively, and special teams, we've got to, to basically execute better and play harder than they do. All right, Coach, this was fun. First time I've been in this seat, but it was fun. Glad to be here with you. The Badgers will head up to Haskell Harmony Grove to take on the Cardinals this Friday night. Kickoff is set for 7 p.m. If you can't make the trip, if you're in Arkadelphia, you can listen on KSWH 102.5 FM, The Pulse, or as always, you can watch the game with the football doctor, Jeff Root, on ArkadelphiaBadgerTV.com. Pre-game will start at 6.30. Until next week, when Caleb Bird will be back to talk about the Harmony Grove Arkadelphia game. Thanks for watching. This is the J.R. Eldridge Show. Sponsors of the J.R. Eldridge Show include Southwest Sporting Goods, Taylor King and Associates, Mary and Martha's Florist and Gifts, Price and Company, Doctors Rob and Gary Rucker. Eccles, Thompson, and Nebo. Farm Bureau Insurance of Clark County. Turner and Turner, Attorneys at Law. Blake Bell of Edward Jones Investments. The accounting firm of Turner, Rogers, Manning, and Plyler. Welch Funeral Home. Roger Wingfield of State Farm Insurance and Southern Bancor. The J.R. Eldridge Show is produced each week by the Rogers Department of Communication at Washita Baptist University.